So now we are good to go. Yeah. Okay. First time actually starting the webinar, guys. So Katie's walking me through it. We'll just give it a minute. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us on, I guess here's not such a beautiful day, but it's warm. A little rainy, but needed. Absolutely. We've been having a couple of really, really hot days here in Southern Ontario. I don't know if anybody's been hearing about the heat heat bubble is what we've been calling it. It's been moving across from the West Coast of Canada to now it's starting to settle over us. And it, um, it it's it's been pretty warm for Canada. Let's be real. <laughs> I know. Actually, as I said that, I'm like, we've been having a bit of a heat wave, but nothing like the West Coast or BC, so I shouldn't even. <laughs> Oh yeah, Betty just popped in the chat. Any day below 40 degrees, any day without <laughs> negative 40 degrees is a good day. Yeah, totally. <laughs> we complain all winter here. And, and then we get this warm weather and we start, we, we keep complaining. So we, we probably shouldn't. <laughs> That's great. Okay, I think we've got, I think most people who are probably sitting there in the waiting room and, and waiting. So um, let's get started and make the most of the hour because we have a lot to get through. So if you've been in our webinars before, um, I'm Katrina, this is Katie, we're on our marketing team. We love sharing information with you guys. So today we're all about websites, how to set up, design and get noticed online. So even that title just has a lot behind it. So we do have a lot to get to um, today. And then the agenda, um, we'll go through an intro as always. Um, Katie's going to review how to create a website, how to get started how to register your domain name, which can be a little daunting if you're not familiar, but can be really simple. Um, got some great resources there to help you and uh, how to get noticed, which is why you're gonna want to become good friends with Google and use their resources as much as possible when you want to rank as high as you can on their search results page. We'll get into that. Um, we'll quickly touch on design and you know there's so much that goes on behind the scenes and why you want to you know rank high and be seen and your content and what goes into the website but of course we want to make it look pretty and that's a huge uh, asset to your website as well uh, telling your brand story we touched on this a little bit in um our part one of our social media series but it completely applies here definitely there about us page you want to make you know the most of that on your website and then as always we'll go through um, a Q&A. So hopefully we'll have some time. I think we've allotted uh, about 15 minutes. We can kind of get ourselves to 3.15 or 12.15, turning where you are. We'll need some time for, uh, for Q&A. So drop those in the chat and use the Q&A uh, feature as well. I pulled up the chat here, but I should probably pull up a Q&A um, too. So drop those throughout and we'll address them at the end. Without further ado, flip it over to Katie. That was, All oh right. my gosh, no, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Why does having a website matter? Why is it important? Could you just be on social? Why is it important? <laughs> no, that's that's a great question. I also just wanted to mention that we will be sending a recording um, right. of this presentation. So if anybody has to pop out or you want to review it, go back, share it with somebody. Uh, we'll be sending that follow up email as usual within uh, the twenty four hours after today's webinar, so that you can you can go ahead rewatch it. Uh, if you want to do that, that will be sent to you for sure. Uh, I know everybody has a busy day, so if you have to pop out and leave, no problem. Uh, you can drop your questions in early as well. If you uh, have a burning question, you know what it is, and we just haven't gotten to it yet, put it in the Q&A, and then you can watch it through in the recording. That's what I do on webinars when I don't want to be there the whole time. Uh, <laughs> but we're so glad that you're here today. So uh, we're, we're going to jump into the first bit. So the introduction. Why does it matter? So I want to start off by actually just uh, with a quick poll here, just to see um, where everybody's at who's on this call. Um, actually, I'm just going to quickly ask Katrina to make me a co-host so I can launch that sucker. Um, oh my gosh, you're giving me a task that I don't even. I know. I, I oh, hear you to do already. <laughs> no problem. Oh, here we go. Easy button. Okay. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to put a poll out there. First question, do you have a website? I've given y'all three options there. Um, I hope that encompasses it. I'm actually glad that some people are using that sort of answer. That's yeah. That's great. <laughs> Love it. Also, I think that's most of you. 
Mm, almost evenly split. I mean, kind of between the yes and no or not yet. Yeah, pretty, pretty even. So the yeses have it. Uh, we have a couple of sort of <laughs> you guys were here for you and not yet as well. We're here for you. And uh, I hope we're going to we're going to share some really useful information today. So let's get going. All right, so we're going to head back to the slide deck there. And uh, we want to talk first about creating a website. So the, the why does it matter? I do want to just touch on that quickly. We're not going to spend too much time on the on like the nitty gritty. I'm not going to walk you through 20 reasons why uh, a website matters, but it's all kind of in what we're going to talk about today. So if we head to the next slide, there's a couple of reasons. These are the ones I want us to really pay attention to. One, being found. Um, don't have a website and you know that your customers exist in a digital space, that's where they're going to want to find you. I don't know a single person who is going to go driving around out in the country hoping to stumble upon uh, a great sign. I know some people have really great signs outside their farm um, or are just going to use word of mouth these days. I love getting recommendations from my friends, but what I'm going to do after they tell me about that product or that that uh, that place, I'm going to go online and look for them. So it's important to have somewhere for those people to go and to find you once they've been told about you. So regardless of whether someone's hearing about you through word of mouth or they're just doing a search online, you need to be there in front of them. A website is the foundation uh, to do that. Secondly, directing your marketing somewhere. So having social media. Um, is really, really great and a great way to tell your story online in real time, to talk about promotions, to use it as a megaphone, to get uh, like promotions or sales or what's in season out to your audience. But when you want to direct them back to, hey, need directions? Go here to my website. Hey, you want to learn more? Go to my website. Hey, want to shop online? I've got my e-commerce attached to my website. It's going to give your marketing somewhere to use as its home base, its HQ. Also lets you take control of your online presence. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about registering your business with Google and claiming your business on Google. You can attach your e-commerce. Like I said, uh, we can talk, we're going to talk about that a little bit, but not too much. So your website is a place where things live. Think about it like that. Your about us page lives there. Maybe some photos of your farm live there. Your e-commerce also lives there. Um, at Local Line, we like to talk about having an online presence and integrating your e-commerce. We also like to talk about how your e-commerce can act as your website sometimes, uh, the way that it's set up. But today we're specifically going to talk about your website itself. And then we're going to talk about lending cred credibility to your business when we talk about storytelling a little bit. So if you don't have a website in this day and age that actually detracts from your credibility across the board. Um, we, as, as digital natives, my generation really understands that like, if we don't see something online, this sounds so bad, but it doesn't exist. It's not online. It's hard for us to find it because that's, that's how we function for better or for worse. Um, we also see businesses that have established presences uh, on the web as more credible. Uh, and there's, there's lots of psychology behind that, but um, this is kind of one of those trust me moments. Uh, <laughs> so lending credibility to your business through your website is really important. All right, another poll for you as we get into a little bit more about creating a website in the nitty gritty, uh, what is a domain, name? domain name? So let's go to the next slide there. I'm gonna launch a poll. I'm gonna poll two here. We have a couple of options there. What is a domain name? Your farm name, the name of your domain. Possible answer, a zoning bylaw. An identification string used as a kind of digital address. <laughs> um, I didn't make it too obvious there. There's a couple of trick answers. Um, what do you all think? Uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you all to the punch in the chat here. Uh, <laughs> there could be multiple answers. I get it. All right. Okay, so it is it is uh, an identification string used as a kind of digital address. Uh, the name of your domain also also uh, applies. But uh, you ever heard that rule in school? Don't use a word from the word you're trying to define in the definition. So anyway, that was my little my little trick question there. <laughs> and your farm name. Your farm name is an interesting answer. It could very well be your farm name. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be, but your farm name is a good idea for your domain name to be. So our domain name is localline.ca because our company name is Localine um, and we are in Canada. So that's the .ca part of it. Uh, our home base is in Canada. There are also other options at the end, .com, .net, .org. And there's different reasons why people choose those. Uh, but mainly we're going to be talking about .com domain names today. Um, they're probably the, they are the most plentiful uh, domain name out there uh, or the end, uh, the suffix on a domain name. So we're going to be talking about that today. All right. Another poll for, for all of you. So if anyone's trying to not pay attention today, um, sorry. So uh, why is it important? launch that here. Why is it important to have a domain name? And so I'm talking about, as I launch this poll here, as, a, as I'm launching that, I'm talking about such and such dot com. Why, why not just, you know, if you're building your website somewhere, why not just stick with, like if you're using local line sites, why not stick with the, you know, Merlin's Meadow Farm dot local line sites dot com. Why, why not? Why just stick with that? Or, you know, when you build like a Wix site or anything like that, how you kind of, if you don't buy, if you don't purchase the domain name, you just kind of get one of those domain names that has the actual website builder um, in it. So why is it important to have a domain name? Great. Yeah, you all are, uh, are on the ball here. All of the above. So it's for recognition, mobility. We're going to talk about how you can take your domain name uh, with you, if you want to change your website builder, if you want to change the way that your website's built, the way it looks, the way it feels, um, you can take that domain name with you. You own it. Um, mobility, SEO, so search engine optimization, and professionalism. It does just look a touch more professional if you own your domain name and your, you know, merlinsmeadow.com. Great. Let's move on to that next slide there. Awesome. So a couple of different things uh, we wanna pay attention to here. So what you wanna do, the first thing usually, if you're looking to build a website is you want to register a domain name. That means you purchase that domain name, it is yours, you own it. There's a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, you can do it through local line sites. Of course, I'm gonna talk about local line sites. Uh, this is a local line webinar after all, without a little bit of shameless promotion, why, where would we be? So you can do it through local line sites. You can also go to places like GoDaddy and they will, they walk you through the process of purchasing that domain name. I'm not going to go through it step by step. It is incredibly easy. It is what these companies do. You go onto their website, you purchase a domain name and you own it. It is yours. Um, and you can either continue to choose, you can choose to continue to build your site through any other uh, site builder, or you can take it with you and you can move it somewhere else. So for instance, if you do go, if you go, and I'll use this as our example, if you go to local line sites, uh, local line sites, is it .ca, I believe for ours, Katrina? Dot .com. So local line sites .com. If you go there, you will have the option to either purchase a new domain name if you don't have one, or bring one. So you can bring your domain name to a new website builder. It's usually when you go to sign up. So it's easy peasy. You go to sign up with whatever website builder you want to choose. And if you already own your domain name, they will walk you through the process step by step. Um, it just involves verifying that you are the owner of that domain name, that it is paid for, and it's registered to you. Um, and also, sorry. Next. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Jump in. For. If you've never bought a domain name before, they do range in price, but they're very affordable. Yes. Like it's $9.99 yes. a year, maybe, or sometimes $2. Um, 
Um, if you want to register something that's, I think, like really niche and, you know, very, most of these have been snapped up, but uh, if you do want to buy something uh, that is a little bit smaller or shorter, um, it sometimes can be a little bit more expensive. But if your farm name or your business name is not already purchased, it's really affordable. I think most are saying like $15. Katie and I were just talking before this and she and I both yeah. own like our names.com or .ca just to even have, <laughs> just to own. Yeah, um, bought it back in university. My Mine is is personally $9.99 a year. It's not expensive at all. Um, I've got a funny Irish name that nobody else has, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I just wanted to put that in there in case you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, to buy a domain name might be a little bit out of my budget. It, it most likely is not. Um, so anyways, just move on. Yeah. Yeah. I, great point. And, and great point launching into choosing a domain name here. Um, your business name, again, depending on how unique it is, might be, might be cheaper because it's not really, it's not been snapped up and there's no demand for it. Um, but if you have a very common or more common name, you might need to get a little bit creative with what you name your farm, uh, or what you name, what you choose as your domain name. So for instance, let's say, um, your farm name is three rivers farm. It's a very popular farm name. I know two in the area and I'm sure there's more online. Three rivers just happens to be three rivers is a very popular one. So if that's your farm name think about how you can modify that a little bit. So if the focus uh, at threeriversfarm.com three rivers um, is going to be, uh, let's say grass-fed beef sales, um, if you, you can also try variations that still make sense for your business, still guide the user, still respect uh, SEO, search engine optimization, best practices to say three rivers farm beef, three rivers grass-fed beef, uh, you can you can do some variations on that and try to find one that hasn't been snapped up before and is within your price range. You can also do like a call to action uh, for I've seen like you could do yeah. like shop three rivers farm or I've seen you know totally depending. Um, yeah, yeah, that's an awesome idea too. Uh, I didn't think of that. That's great. Um, the next bit here, .ca.com.net, for the most part, people are going to be choosing uh, .com addresses. We have .ca again because we're in Canada. You'll also see like .co.uk, uh, .gov is a government website, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it has a little bit to do, that suffix has a little bit to do with um, where you are in, in the world if you choose to do that. Um, .org usually uh, is used primarily for not-for-profit organizations a lot of the time or, uh, or government entities will sometimes use .org as well. So .com is good. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's, the, that's by and large uh, the easiest choice in all of this. Actually, we've gotten so really search not oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, just the, if speaking of CTAs, you can also put them at the end or they'll do like dot online. Or oh, dot that's a new or thing. Dot. Yeah, I've seen a little bit more of that. Anyways, they might pop up when you go and, and search, but anyways, I don't know all the ones. For the that. most part, to keep it neutral, uh, dot, dot com is a great idea. Yeah. Uh, but you will see, yeah, you'll see dot shop uh, as well. I've seen that pop up a couple of times, it's weird. But uh, all right, so search engine optimization, I'll touch quickly on this. I don't wanna take up too much time here. Um, is uh, we just talked about it. So a domain name that matches what people search when they're looking for you. It's just simple at the end of the day, like if someone is searching for, um, you know, farm near me to have farm, the word farm in your, uh, in your domain name, great idea. Think a little bit about what people are searching when they're looking for local food, local produce, uh, locally raised, uh, locally raised animal products as well. Just do a little think if people are going to be searching for local farms, farm should be in there. Um, so it follows you. We talked about this a little bit. You don't have to keep the same website builder. So you can move, you can move that around. All right, let's move on to the get noticed section here. So we covered a little bit about um, getting your domain name set up and, um, and we see your question there, Betty. We will be getting to that uh, in the Q&A. We'll say, we'll say that one's a great question. All right, so registering your business with Google. So I wanted to uh, create a couple of like absolutely beautiful slides that walked you through this process step-by-step. Step, and then I went to go like make sure my information was correct on Google. And lo and behold, they do a much better job. 
<laughs> that I could explaining this whole process. So I've summarized it here, but I also, I'm gonna share my screen in a second just to show you what that website looks like, where you can actually go and Google will walk you through those steps, step by step. It's not very long, but they do, uh, they do a really, really good job. So first and foremost, registering your business with Google. So you can see in the picture there, you know, when you pop up, when that little pop up comes along the side, when you're searching for something in the Google search engine. Um, so I searched in this little search here, I searched local line and we came up on the side one because of proximity. Uh, my IP address is, you know, it's here in Canada, in Cambridge, Ontario. And for me to search local line, it makes sense there in Kitchener. It goes, we kind of assume that you're looking for this local line and it pops up on the side there as the most relevant uh, destination results. So on that right hand side, that's where those business cards are going to pop up. So when you claim or create your business, it ensures that that is accurate. You can manage reviews and you can ultimately be found. That's the key. You want to be found by the people who are searching for you or searching for local food uh, near them you want to be able to pop up in their search results. So there's information there that can help someone uh, get to your farm. It helps people know a little bit more about you before, uh, before they go and actually like maybe do an order or pick up. And it makes sure that your website, which is attached to that little card, is correct. Um, so I'll dive in really quickly about how you want to do that. So there's two ways. One, Sometimes businesses are or already appear on these uh, geographically based results when someone searches for a business. Uh, so let's say you're again, we'll use Merlin's Meadow uh, as an example. Um, Merlin's my dog, uh, but it's also what we call our test account here in marketing. And when we mock anything up, we call it Merlin's Meadow. Uh, so let's say you are Merlin's Meadow. And someone does know that you exist. Someone has been there before. Um, someone has populated those results that, you know, this is Merlin's Meadow, it's here. Google also auto-populate some of that as well from its community. So you might exist as a business when uh, geographically, uh, Google might know that you exist there, but it hasn't been claimed yet. So the business owner has not gone in and, go, and gone, hey Google, that's my business and filled in the rest of the details. So you can claim that business. So the other option is if it doesn't exist there yet, say you're a very new business, you're just starting out and it doesn't exist in those geographical results, um, you can go and create and register your business within Google. So I'm just gonna quickly share that. Um, we're also gonna drop the, the link for this in the chat so you can go and check that out. Let me just get a couple things out of the way here. And then, okay, perfect. So one sec, I'm just gonna share my screen and show y'all what that looks like. Do I need to stop sharing? Oh no, you got it. Okay, so this is where you would go. So we will drop this link um, into the chat. You can also just search Google My Business and this will come up uh, as, the, as the first result. So getting set up, first article, how to claim and verify your Google My Business listing. So we click on that. It gives us a few reasons why to do that. Making sure the address is accurate so that after someone's placed an order on your website, they can go and find you, pick up. Uh, there we go. Gives a few reasons why you should claim that. We've already, we've talked about that a little bit, but you feel free to read through. They give some great information. How can I create or claim it? So then it'll give you the two options here. So creating a profile. If you don't already have an account, you can easily create one or claim an existing business profile. So it gives you instructions right on this page, how to do that. So I highly recommend if that's something that you wanna do, go in, read through this and then follow the steps. It is so incredibly easy. Um, it will get you to enter a phone number, do some verification, make sure that you exist 
and then um, and then you will have claimed that and you can manage things like reviews you can prompt your I'm just going to stop sharing here and go back to the other screen awesome and then Katrina you might need to reshare uh, you can go in prompt your customers for reviews you know you want to be that star rating that you see that star rating that we all go by when we're looking for a new restaurant we're looking for a new business uh, to go and frequent that's important you want to make sure that that star rating is one, accurate, and two, you want to be prompting your happy customers to be leaving positive reviews. Um, and you can change things. If, you're if your hours change a little bit, you can adjust them on Google as well. It's really a really important piece if you are like, no, I'm not open on Mondays. I'm not taking orders on Mondays. Um, if you don't want anybody calling you during those times as well, inquiring about your business, put those hours uh, into your Google My Business as well. All right. So I want to talk a little bit more about SEO and keywords. SEO could be a scary topic sometimes. Um, it feels very advanced at first if it's something that you've never thought about before. Um, but here's some keys to success. So first of all, search engine optimization. What does that really mean? At the end of the day, in this webinar, and for the purposes of this webinar, um, we're gonna talk about it as how to get a search engine to pull up your business as a top result. How can a search engine find you and find you in context, right? So in the right context, when somebody searches certain keywords. So it's as simple as if you sell local food, use the words local food on your main landing page where most people land when they first click on your URL, so your, your home page, so to speak. So pick those relevant keywords, do a little bit of thinking, do a little bit of research uh, to see what keywords are associated with your business. For instance, if you grow local food, local food, farm to table, uh, even <laughs> something as simple as the word organic, free range, carrots, like if you're if you sell carrots and that's that's something that you're growing, you can put that on there as well. Um, a little research goes a long way. Absolutely. You can also test it out. If you are like, okay, I really want to come up when someone searches uh, local produce near me. Search local produce near me and see what comes up. See if you come up. Um, also spy on your neighbors, go check out your neighbor's websites, see what they use, see what's on their homepage, what, what are they writing about in that first blurb, what's the title of their page, that also has a lot to do with it. So if the heading on your, on your page is uh, your farm name, make sure your subheading talks, has some of those keywords in there. All right, so if we want to flip to the next slide, perfect. Couple more advanced SEO tips. I'm not gonna go through this too, too much, um, but there's lots of great courses out there if you want to get a little bit deeper into things. Here's a couple of quick tips. If you're past sort of those initial keywords, you got set up with a great uh, domain name, you're ready to go, you've got uh, some great copy on your landing page. The next thing, if you're using photos, um, there's this thing called, so meta descriptions in your site builder. Photos will have a field to describe what is in that photo or in that section. Make sure you're actually putting something there. Uh, most site builders will give you a little bit of a reminder, hey, you don't have anything here and to fill it in, uh, use your keywords. File names, make sure that your photos are named something descriptive of what is in that photo and try again to use your keywords. Relevant URL slugs. So after the slash, that little bit there. So when someone searches, for instance, I give an example here, local line sign up. When they search that, that those terms, what do we want to come up? Local line.ca slash sign up, right? So don't use something that's totally not associated to what's on the page or like page one, page two, page three, um, actually title in the slug after the slash, what that page is about. So if it's um, merlinsmeadow.com slash about us. If that's the about us page, 
yeah, merlinsmeadow.com slash contact us. So if someone searches contact Merlin's Meadow, it's going to be easier for that search engine to find you and, and uh, surface that page higher up in those search results. And backlinks, this last one, something to consider if you're on the more uh, advanced side of SEO right now and trying to kind of up your, uh, up your presence on the web. Uh, getting any press, if the local paper is doing a story about local food uh, and you're mentioned in it, make sure that there is a link back to your site. So the way that that works in terms of SEO is that the more credible sources, so that's going to be press, associations, stuff that is verifiably authoritative according to uh, the search engine's parameters, verifiably authoritative on the subject has links to your site and has a good number of quality links. So, uh, you know, if you're a part of an association or a directory, a reputable directory, get that backlink on there. They're just little pieces you build over time to build credibility and it bolsters your SEO. It bolsters uh, search engine's ability to find you and surface that result higher and higher. Um, and make sure that they're meaningful. So there's definitely a lot of companies out there that are just like, no, no, we'll get you backlinks, we'll get you backlinks. And I've seen this happen before where it's just, um, it, it's a shadow page. It's, a, it's just some website somewhere that just has a bunch of links and it's hidden um, under a, a, a URL that's just not associated with really anything. And yeah, sure, they're backlinks, but they're not meaningful. And that's at the end of the day, uh, not going to take you very far. So don't be swayed into, you know, paying someone who says that they're an SEO expert to just uh, create backlinks for you that don't mean anything. Uh, really go out. And if you want to do some work, uh, get in touch with those associations with uh, your press contacts in the area, if you know, someone at the local paper and, and get your name out there and get people talking about you. All right. So I, I have, have talked quite a lot. Um, you guys have sent in some really wonderful questions uh, that we will get to at the end. If you're not able to make it, don't worry. All of these that we have here, we will be answering in the q and I'm going to turn it over to Katrina and we're going to talk a bit about design and do a bit of a demo with a product called Canva, which we, we rely on it. We, we love it. We think it's, it's fantastic. So I'll, I'll leave it to you. Super valuable information. You might have talked, <laughs> felt like you were talking on end, but it was so <laughs> great. So thank you. Oh, um, appreciate it. <laughs> so Canva, we, you know, I want to talk about design and, and kind of will, but really, I really want to rely on Canva specifically. So it's an online design and publishing tool. What you can do, it's really just graphic design. It's completely free. There are um, paid versions, but the features that or in the paid versions are really not much more than the free. So please, I encourage you to just use it, um, the free one, if, if that's all you need. And it'll help you create social media posts. We use it for hours. You can create printed materials like brochures, flyers. Uh, you can do newsletters, logos, and website graphics, which is definitely what I'm going to be touching on and doing a little bit of a, a demo. But um, yeah, and it, you know, it's not super applicable for this webinar, but it is something that you can publish directly from. So if you want to do a brochure or a flyer or something like that, you can actually just hit publish and order them um, right from Canvas. So that is super cool. We talked a little bit about Merlin's Meadow. Uh, this is the logo that we created for our... What? Oh, here we go. So for our uh, pretend little... Uh, logo. My dog's farm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So we use this, like I said, for, uh, like Katie said, for screenshots and things like that. And, and when we want to place like test orders and do that. So this is Merlin's Motto and we created a logo for it. Um, this was used, created uh, in Canva. So let me actually flip over. Well, since I'm here, I'm sharing my screen. This is my slide. Take a real time look at Canva. So I wanted to flip over. You'll see I actually created two uh, versions of this. So if you ever wanted to use Merlin's Motto, let's say on social or a different variation, um, I always like to kind of put like a circle behind it and just do the inverse uh, colors there. But okay, so Canva.com, that's where you go. We're always signed in. So when I type Canva.com, it brings up all of our past designs currently in use, um, anything that we're working on. Uh, you might see, you know, past <laughs> banners and things that we've used. Um, this is definitely the cover for our- Everybody's webinar. gonna see all my webinar emails just popping up there. Yeah, <laughs> our socials. 
Um, so what you can do then is you can, uh, what I would encourage you to do is just create a design. So let's kind of forget all this. This is where we live and go back into past projects. But if you want to just create a design, it'll prompt you to choose from their pre-built uh, templates and uh, sizes, or you can just create a custom size. So what, in terms of websites, what you're going to want to use Canva for um, really are logos. And what I like to do, and actually, you know what, I'm just going to open, or I already have it open. What I like to do is if um, you're doing a banner on a website, um, even just a local line cover photo, something like that, I like to do this kind of offline, create a file with the dimensions like required of that. And you'll be able to find like whether you use Squarespace or local insights, or, you know, if it's, if you're doing it for the cover photo um, here, just to have that up as an example, I like to kind of create a file that are these dimensions. And then I drop whatever image I want to use in there, manipulate it a little bit. And then I know exactly how it's going to show up. So you can see that I did that as well. So here are our um, webinar backgrounds and title graphics and things like that. So we all notice here in our webinar deck, this is just an image. You can see this like green banner here. I've just created it here. And so I've you know, played around with it and then I just swap out the image and then I know exactly how I want it to show up on the, on the slides. And the same thing can apply to your website. So I can just adjust this and, and move this around, make sure it's high res and things like that. So similarly, you can do that with your website. Again, it'll all depend on which um, website platform you're using, but let's go into logos uh, specifically. So if you want to create a design and you do not yet have a logo for your website or your business at all, great resource here is Canva because they have so many pre-built options that you can just quickly manipulate here. Um, it'll just pull up. Okay, perfect. So on the left-hand side, you're going to go to templates. Because I've chosen logo as the file that I want to create, it's already generated a bunch of logos here. If I had clicked Instagram post or Instagram story, likewise, they would all populate there on the left. So any one of these, I mean, you can choose a lot of these are, they are, I wanted to use the word balance, but that's it. They're very, they're balanced. They have a mix of fonts, which is ideal. Um, they are simple in terms of design and also color but completely customizable in that if you want to see, they've given those two options kind of similar to the way we did Merlin's Meadow. It's very intuitive. You just hover over each of these elements. You can just change up the color. Um, I'm gonna go actually into this a little bit. I wanna talk about a feature of Canva. Um, you can do a brand, you can set some brand colors. So I'll go into that, but you can just change this up all these elements are customizable in terms of color. If I decide I don't want a bee, but maybe I want a cow, um, they have what's called, what they called elements. And you can just search cow icon. And there you go. It'll bring up a few. So you can drop that there instead. Make a liar out of me, there it is. Okay, so I'll just delete the bee and I can just change that up. But, you can change the font. You can, of course, customize what is said here. And when you're happy with whatever logo you've created, the download is on the top right. And you can, uh, Transparent Background is actually in the Pro um, subscription. So you will not have that option in the free, but it'll just be a, a white background and you would just download it. You choose the file type. If you want a PNG or a JPEG, I recommend doing a PNG if you're gonna include this on your website. And then you just download it. It downloads right to your computer and just upload it. Um, again, this isn't, I mean, this is more for social, but if uh, just when you're using Canva for a logo, I love putting your logo here in this square um, file just because when you upload it to social or somewhere where you need to have like Google My Business or something like that, it's uh, you don't need to kind of manipulate it. If you have a logo that's not quite, this one's a circle, but if you have one that's, let's kind of drag this over, um, a rectangle that isn't intuitively going to fit into a square or a circle profile image, depending if it's Google or Instagram or anything like that, it's great to just drop it in here into a file that's already a square. 
again, manipulate it exactly how you would like to see it on any of those platforms and then upload it. And it's just, it's super nice and clean and, and really simple. Um, so the other thing I wanted to mention then with Canva, let me go actually to home here. So we're already logged in as local line. I'm gonna go to our account settings. That's probably not what I wanna do. No, I wanted to do, <laughs> login screen, sorry. It was right there, I saw it as soon as I clicked it, the brand kit, I thought that was in our account settings. So we set this initially. So what you can do, highly encourage you to do so. We've set all of our brand elements here in this brand kit. We've identified the colors we wanna use, our secondary colors, which are our beiges and grays. Um, we have a brand font. And so we do have these uploaded here. You can upload um, a custom font as well, if that's something you're familiar with. And then we have our logos here, different variations, uh, just the icon, we have the, our green and then our inverse white. So when I am creating anything in here and I wanna do um, yeah, anything like text, like when I change this up, our brand fonts will show up here. Our brand colors always show up at the top here. So it's just a much easier way um, if you're going to be using, of course, those colors, which I encourage you to do and, and have that brand. That's a whole other conversation. I'd love to do a webinar on that if you're interested on branding and design. So that's just a quick overview of how Canva can work. And I encourage you to use it because we clearly do all the time. You can see with our, uh, all of our past projects that we have going on. So very easy, very intuitive. If you have questions, um, you can direct them to me at kkudo.localline.ca. I'm happy to help. But that's Canva. And my you know what, I was going to share some tips, but that's really what I wanted to um, share was just to make sure that your logos are, if you don't already have one, um, are very balanced using, you know, a, a variation of logo uh, fonts, maybe something really strong, something a little, uh, you can change this font, you know, organic producers can be something a little lighter, a little smaller, um, incorporating your brand colors, and using that brand kit, because that'll make things a lot easier and simpler for you. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. I, I love Canva. It's such a useful tool and it's it's so uh, user friendly and the barrier to entry is super low. You can start like, and we we are truly not getting kicked back for any of this. They are not paying us to say this. It's a great, it's a, a great tool. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> not sponsored. Cheers absolutely. <laughs> um, the other thing, and, and we wanted to mention this as well, we want to mention it softly during this, um, during this presentation, but something to also consider when you're designing for your website is accessibility. And we, we're not gonna, we're not diving too deep into it because it can be a more advanced concept for web design. Um, but a couple of things you wanna think of when you're creating maybe your first website or sprucing up your website uh, are things like visual contrast. So if you want, you need to make sure that the words that are on the screen have enough contrast so that they can be seen, uh, so that they can be seen well. So let's say you're designing your logo and kind of the, the font is maybe a color that's a little bit uh, a little bit light. And so on a lighter background, you might not be able to see it, might not be able to see what it is. Um, just think about things like that and, and thinking about uh, making sure that that can be seen, that it can be read. Uh, I dropped an article there in the chat. If uh, Lee had a great mention there about accessible design and it's, I, I absolutely love the topic and it's something we can go on about for days and days and days, I think for a, a very stark beginner, really think about that visual contrast, making sure that stuff is readable, that stuff is is there. And also if you have uh, the ability in your website builder to go in and put a description on some of your photos, um, that's also a piece of the accessibility puzzle to describe what's happening in that photo. Um, so I'll, I'll just I'll just quickly uh, give uh, a quick list, just pulling out of that article that I've shared. Um, so in terms of accessible web design, there are just some basic standards and they're around something being perceivable. Can you consume content on your site in different ways? Having closed captions on video is an example of that. Um, it's operable, is the site able to be used without confusion? Is it understandable? Can the way that the site navigates, um, can it be um, easily under, understandable? Is the user interface uh, functional? And is the information on the site understandable? So 
let's say like when you're writing uh, an example is for, for someone just starting out, if you're writing copy on your website, what we do here at Local Line is we actually do all of our, all of our copywriting to a grade six or seven level. Uh, you can always kind of approximate that. So keep it succinct, simple, straightforward. Um, there's also a couple of great websites out there. Hemingway.com is a good one. You can take a piece of your, of your copy and uh, copy paste it into Hemingway and it'll tell you what level, uh, oh, what reading okay. level that's at. It's really awesome. Yeah, I do that with our blog posts. It's oh, I didn't resource. know that. Um, that, is yeah. not, that is much easier said than done. It's it a is. good resource. Yeah. Instead of having to pour through all of these guides, trying to make something at like a certain, a certain grade level, you can just pop it right in. Mm -hmm. um, so you can, you can use that, but again, just making things simple, straightforward um, is it, a big part of that. And the last one is a little bit more complicated. So robust can different assistive devices. So screen readers understand the website. Don't worry too much about that because most modern uh, website uh, building platforms are con like they're considering this as they build these drag and drop website builders, right? So that's a lot of that's already built into the background. Um, but another, like I said, a piece of that is going to be having descriptions for your photos so that a screen reader can go through uh, and read that. Uh, yes, there are some legal. Yes, we again, great, great point. There are some legal implications there. Um, they are heftier, obviously, for large companies. Uh, but in terms of your design, a lot of that is baked into some of your website builders that that you're you're using as well. Um, in the United States, I'm not an expert in uh, U.S. law at all, but uh, I would definitely go and look that up if you're concerned about it. Uh, there's some great guides online. Uh, you can look up o OADA. Oh, wait. yeah, uh, a AODA compliance uh, for web design. But again, um, as a beginner, just having a site, a site for your farm, a lot of that is baked into your website builder. And we're not going to touch too much on that today. But great to talk about, great to think about, um, especially through those basic principles of making things perceivable, making things easy to read and easy to understand. That's great. So we're going to talk about telling your story. Uh, so this is something that we talked about a little bit in our social media webinar. So this might be a repeat for some of you who caught that one, but I'm giving you an extra piece here today. So when you're writing, let's say we're going to use the, um, that main first paragraph on your website. Let's say you've got your header and then you've got a little bit about your farm below that in the body that first piece of text, um, you want that to be really punchy. You want it to introduce you, your business, what you do, what you're selling, why you're there. Uh, and, and you do want to address a little bit about why your user is there. Why, why is your customer there? So we talk a lot about the three act structure. This is probably the most familiar to a lot of people. In act one, you have the setup where you introduce yourself a product place, the rising action or the problem, and then you present a resolution to the problem. So today I've actually given uh, an example of that. So let's flip to the next slide here. So first thing, I'm missing a comma uh, out of everything here. Hello and welcome to Merlin's Meadow Family Farm in Cambridge, Ontario. We love growing. I would put a period there too. I'm just going to edit my stuff right off the bat. Uh, so we, tell, we, we say a little bit about what we do, who we are. We love to grow fruit and vegetables for you and your family. The problem we know it can be tough finding local organic ethically sourced produce through large grocery stores. Totally. That's why, we, and then we present our solution. That's why we created our online store. Shop this year's crop of peas, pepper, salad, greens, and tomatoes in the comfort of your home. So you set things up for your audience there. And it's a nice structured way. If, you, if you're not sure where to start in describing um, your farm, your story, these are great structures to get you started. Fun fact, I'm actually growing peas, peppers, salad greens, and tomatoes in my backyard this year. So this is very true. Merlin's Meadow exists. It's in my backyard. <laughs> All right, let's switch to the next one. The star chain hook. We, we do this a lot in social media and writing descriptions and captions. So first you have the star, an attention getting positive opening, something, something splashy, something punchy. Next you have the chain where you take that initial punchy idea and you string it along using some facts and benefits and supporting information. 
Once you've got that big punchy beginning, you've got that extra information that someone needs, then you swoop in with a call to action. That's where you ask someone to act in response to the information that they just received. So let's go to uh, the next slide there. And there's an example. Shop local food from the comfort of your home. Great claim, love it. It's punchy, um, it's something newer in the market. It's something people are interested in the market right now. We talk a little bit about Merlin's Meadow. We have some background information. Merlin's Meadow, we grow organic, pesticide-free fruits and vegetables, not fruits. I live in Canada. It's hard for a backyard grower to grow fruit, uh, except for apples, like two apples right now. With multiple delivery options to choose from, we offer customizable order of all sizes. This year we're growing salad greens, peas, peppers, and four varieties of heirloom tomatoes. Now, I wanna pause. In that chain, I've also included some of my keywords. Orders, salad greens, heirloom tomatoes. A lot of people do search specifically for heirloom X, Y, Z. So heirloom is, is a word that I wanted to throw in there. Delivery, also a, a great keyword. Uh, and local food. So shop now and experience the joy of local food. So that's the call to action. So after they've heard that great splashy idea, some information, they now are being called to act on that and shop from your store. All right, so if we move on here, just before we launch into the Q&A, on the storytelling note, let's talk a bit about the About Us page. Most websites, if you're gonna start at your bare bones, minimum, most people should have a basic landing page, the place where people land your homepage, have a little bit about you, maybe some photos of your farm, and then an about us page where you can dig a little bit deeper. You can put your contact info there if you so choose. And the third one should be your store. So attaching your e-commerce. You can do that pretty easily. With local line, you can embed your store into, the, into your website. You can also just choose to have a shop now button on your website and it'll take you direct take uh someone directly to your store so really easy ways to make sure that someone lands somewhere they learn a little bit they go to the about us they learn a little bit more and then they can go ahead and shop so if we're just if we're talking if i'm speaking directly to anyone who's like i need the bare bones i need just the basics um that is my suggestion for you is to go with homepage about us and your shop okay so Q&A time. Uh, I love this portion of the webinar. We've had some great questions come in already. So let's, let's get to it. I'm going to pull these up. I can jump in. I've got it pulled up so I can. Sweet. I'll, I'll leave it to you then. Yeah. The first one, um, do all hosting sites, and I hope this isn't anonymous, so I really hope you're still on the call and it, this was typed almost an hour ago. So I appreciate it, but do all hosting sites have the same cost? for the same domain or should you shop around? They do not have the same cost. They may not vary by much, but they will not always be the same. So worth shopping around, um, depending on whether it's GoDaddy or um, I can't now I'm blanking on any of the other ones. If it's just like a, just a domain uh, platform, they will have like different packages. They might have different subscription types. They might have different, um, you know, service anything at all like could be wrapped into their uh, domain cost or not. So worth kind of doing your research and shopping around. It'll be available. I mean, it's available. It's available. So uh, definitely do just look like you know where to buy domain names and and they'll pop up. Um, I wish now I had a list off the top of my head, but I we can send one in the follow up. Email. Yeah, we'll give you a couple a couple of verified options there um, to get you on your way. Totally. This one, Katie, I would love to get your feedback on too. Uh, we have a once a month farm pickup on farm pickup and the rest of the time, Marcy's busy farming. How does she show this on Google My Business? And where I wanted mm, to go with this is I'm thinking great. like your operating hours, because you can do your operating hours. So rather than showing like close, close, closed, or, you know, it goes week to week rather than, you know, month over month. But if you are available or can be reached in those times, maybe between eight to five or something like that, or 12 to five or whenever, could that be something you put on your hours? And then just in the description, just indicate like once a month on the fifth of every month or whenever, if you can do it like recurring, this is when we do home farm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's a great point. Uh, at no time do I look at a business that I haven't investigated and go, I can just show up. Uh, some true. people do do that though. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Some people do do that. Um, 
you could put your, you know, by phone availability hours. Another option that came up in uh, the chat here is putting by appointment only uh, is a great option. If you don't want people to mistake that for times they can just show right up um, and also bake it into your ordering process. So, you know, like if when someone completes the order process in their note or their confirmation email that they get sent, make sure that they know full well that this is there is a prescribed pickup time. And, and obviously like our platform does that, lots of platforms do that to make sure that people know when they're picking up. You're confirming that anyway through the ordering process. Um, so just a couple of things to think about and, and two different choices you could, you could make there as well. Uh, Catherine had a question and I did just want to address it in case anybody else had it. Um, it's a little specific, but how would you link your e-commerce website to an accounting software like Square? Um, with local line we do have on our support support local line if you do sync your local line store with square they will be automatically integrated in that your transactions will show up in your square account um i don't it'll vary by every e-commerce platform so if you're using let's say you know squarespace or something and you have your website there and your e-commerce is there i really don't know you'd have to check in with their um, support team, but they will have, I'm sure, whatever you're using step-by-step, step. but um, you can write into support at localline.ca or go support.localline.ca and search Square and those instructions will pop up and we've got videos on most uh, articles as well with the how-to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you're looking for that, that's great. All right, and then just because we're kind of reaching the end of our time here. Okay, we got some more questions coming in. If you guys are good with sticking around, we're good with sticking around. Yeah, we take it from um, I'm going to ask this one to you, Katrina. Yeah. Can I take my existing logo file and upload to Canva so I can manipulate the size, shape, color for various uses, stickers, brochures, et cetera? Thanks, Emily. Good question. Yeah, that is a great question. Um, the short answer is no, only because if your logo is already existing, you're likely uploading it as a JPEG or a PNG or some other file that cannot be manipulated. Um, your logo might have been, I mean, unless it was created on Canva or some other platform like that, but it might have been created using Illustrator, depending on who you've gotten to, to do your logo or some sort of Adobe, like, you know, Photoshop, maybe somebody might have done it on there. Um, so I guess it might be specific and we can totally chat about this if you want to like send me a logo or like I'm happy to work with you one to one and figure this out. But um, if your logo was created using a, like a graphic design program, you can totally change the colors and then make um, adjustments to any sizing or things like that within that program. But when you upload it to Canva, it would upload as like a static image. So you could create a brand new logo, change all the colors and do whichever you like if you're creating it right in Canva and you're starting there. Um, but if you do have an existing image, unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to make those changes in Canva. That would be great. I don't think, I wanna say like I'm 99.9% .9 sure um, you'd be unable, but. Anyway. Yeah, that's, that, that's a really, really good question. You can absolutely upload your logo file logo file if um, you're only wanting to change the size and the shape if as long as it is a high res totally. uh, version of your of your logo let's say it's like a png you you absolutely can't no problem changing the color gets a little bit more complex because then you are actually changing something in the image not the image as a whole if that makes sense right right uh, yeah, so have those use cases if you want to like throw it on a sticker or use it in a social post or use yeah. it in a logo absolutely can do in canva it just won't be easily manipulated yeah, yeah. The, there's like templates so many templates if you want to do stickers brochures anything um that's actually just kind of the one hang up is that you the actual components of that logo uh you could not manipulate but you could take your logo um and put it on whatever the heck you want Thanks, Kat. Bye. All right. Yeah, it's great. It was a good one. Uh, one I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. Yeah. Any ideas on how to find website designers for small businesses? We want to do the updates, et cetera, but we'd like to hire out the design and setup. We've gotten quotes from three and the prices are all over the place. And we have found it hard to find ones that have a design skill for this industry. You know what? That's, yeah, we hear that. We hear that a lot. Um, I'll give you kind of two answers. One, 
is that if you're just getting started with local line and you're looking to build a simple website and get started, you can always try your hand at it yourself with local, local, localinesites.com. Um, if you're also still in the process uh, with us, we do have the ability to help you out with that. Uh, we, do, we do have someone designated who can uh, do some website design for you through local line sites and get you up and running. Um, and that's for a, a simple, straightforward website, right? If you're if you're wanting to just get something up there, make sure that you have some like beautiful photos and a great template uh, that shows off your farm and was specifically made for farmers making websites. Local line sites, great, great option. And again, reach out to our sales or support team, and we do have someone designated that uh, we can assign to help you with that. Um, there is a cost for it, so I'm just gonna just gonna say, um, but it is relative to going out and finding someone on your own, a a low cost option for you. Um, the other option is is exactly what you've already done is is going around and doing the legwork of uh, finding quotes from from folks who do web design. Um, if you're close to your local local college or university. Um, there's oftentimes students offering those services who are in those programs can be a great option if you're looking to go uh, a lower cost route. Um, yeah. Doing uh, a good thorough search is also an option. Like all of us, we're often going to the internet and going uh, graphic designers or web designers near me and uh, and going through those profiles. Uh, usually the people at the top are the people at the top for a reason. They've either purchased an ad or they are really good with their with their search engine optimization. Um, that also probably means that they're a little bit more expensive. Uh, you also do pay for what you get. So there's a couple facets there. Mm -hmm. um, you do pay for what you get when it comes to, to, to web design. And you really have to ask yourself, what degree do are, are you looking for if you're if you're looking for somebody familiar with the industry, familiar with, with farming, um, hit us up and we can also probably help you out. Uh, if, if you don't wanna use us and local line sites, which like I said, is a great option, uh, made for you, made with you in mind, uh, we'd love to help you find someone in your area if we can, if we can be of assistance. So uh, thanks anonymous, uh, hit us up. <laughs> Hope you're still here. <laughs> Oh, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, don't necessarily have to go student route. Sorry, just seeing the, the follow up there. But uh, yeah, as Katie said, yeah. um, it is it is not easy. I mean, when with any kind of service, you just when you're totally new and green and don't necessarily have a referral or somebody you can rely to say like, you know, yeah, this is my referral is is the the ideal, you know, in my mind, if I was looking for if I was looking to find a web designer or hire a web designer, um, for us here, you know, obviously I'm going to be going to referrals first. I'm going to be asking around, does anyone know someone? Does anyone know someone good? Have they used them before? What do they have to say about them? Um, ask your neighbors, ask, um, you know, if you're at the market, ask around and see uh, what everybody else has used before. But again, uh, it's going to be doing that search and that due diligence yourself. Ask to see um, some of their projects. That's my biggest recommendation. Uh, make sure that you get a hold of their portfolio and see the work that they've done before to see if they're right for you. Um, with just as we wrap up here, if anybody else has a question that I first you later, um, there are no more open questions that I can see. But if you reply to the email invite that was sent out with info on any of the any of the emails with info on this webinar, those questions or requests emails will go directly to Katie and she and I can can address them and answer them via email or, or yeah. email. that's easier so we'll, we'll do that um but thanks there's one question. last one I just want to quickly, quickly oh, I'm touch on. Are we doing this? Are stock doing photos time? yeah can you do can you do stock photos if you want to sell a product and do, do your website templates have that option oh um, so I guess one in local line sites and two, I'll address the how to get stock photos, but I'll, I'll throw the local line sites one to you and then I'll do the stock photo side. Sorry, where is the actual question? I'm, I'm, I'm missing. In the chat. Yeah, someone popped in the oh, chat. I'm sorry. So. I had a couple of windows open here that, uh, can you stock photos from one sell product? Oh, totally. Okay, yes. Um, yeah, so local line sites does have um, many stock photo options. Oh, shoot. Totally wish we would have done a slide here. I was going to talk about that in Canva, but um, 
you can pull from our stock library if you do do it in local line sites. Um, in I'm trying to think in any of the other website platforms if they do have stock photos they do now I know Squarespace does Squarespace actually this is coming to me they'll pull from unsplash. Um, so that's a stock photo option where they're royalty free stock photos. Um, actually, let's send that out. I'm going to make a note. To yeah, send we'll send that out. So you can actually find free stock photos online. We'll send the links to that. Uh, Sunny, we'll send that to, to you in the follow up email. So like Unsplash, Pexels, and they're also royalty free. So like you, you don't have to pay anybody for yeah. them um, and you won't have to if you use them. Um, yeah, great. Yeah, thanks, Katrina. That's perfect. Uh, oh, the ones out there, they're house. out there. Yeah, and in Canada, they are safe. Well. They are safe sites. They are safe sites. You can download those photos uh, to your device and then upload them into your website builder. Um, so there, there's lots of lots of options there yeah. for for stock photos, and that's a big uh, a big tip for your uh, e-commerce store. Have pictures of your products, right? We talk about that all the time. So great, great question. Uh, lots of ways to get stock photos. Yes, that was. And I'm really glad we did actually answer that because I would love to <laughs> those links. Those, that's a great resource to have. Um, okay. Awesome. Okay, so a couple of resources. We did talk about the websites, uh, the sites builder. I'm going to throw these links um, in the chat again. We're going to have this in the follow up email with the recording. Um, but if you don't already have a website and you'd like a free website builder, local line sites. Um, is where to go. And there's templates where you can literally just choose a template, whole website is built, and you can just change the font, change the copy, change the pictures, everything like that. Um, speaking of Canva, we have free templates for Instagram stories if you haven't yet downloaded that. So something that you can totally customize. We talked about customizing colors and pictures and logos and things like that. You know, this week's product lists, recipes, uh, templates that you can easily customize and change to your own brand and update on a weekly basis if you want to share to your stories. Um, we'll drop that link and then our local line members Facebook group. So we share a lot of this directly to the group. If you're not yet a part of that and you're a local line customer, please join us. Um, got a lot of platform related questions. If you have something support, that's just, you know, a quick one off. You want to get somebody else's feedback. You can drop that in there and uh, we love to see the chats happening. The one other thing, this button isn't, oh, here we go. Upcoming events. We are doing something a little different. We're going to do a website audit. So we are going to pull a website up on Facebook Live and we are going to do an audit on that website and you know make some recommendations, um, things that are great, things that could be improved. If you would like your website audited, please let us know. You can either reply to that webinar invite, like I said, it comes right directly to us. Or you can drop us a DM on, on social, um, either way. And so that's gonna be at the end of the July. So Wednesday, July 28th at 5 p.m. And uh, probably only about a half an hour, um, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. So Katie and I are going to do a Facebook Live and, and go through a go through a website or two or how yeah. many if you want to. Yeah, and we won't just roast you. We will we will give you no, some, gosh, no, some no, actionable no. takeaways. Just to, you know, great call outs too. I mean, there are so many things. We will roast about. ourselves, perhaps. That we might be totally roast ourselves. That might be what we do. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> we just went through a website overhaul. We don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, like my personal site website. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what's upcoming. Um, I think that is it. No, we got a thank you slide. So we appreciate it. Thanks for joining us live. I know it's not easy in the middle of the day or whatever time it is for you, but we really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you guys on the twenty eighth. We'll see everybody uh, next time. Take care, all. Bye.